Uh, good evening, my name is Mary Kim. I'm coming from the perspective of an arts educator. I am now the Senior Manager of Learning and Mediation Programs with the Toronto Biennial of Art. The Biennial takes place every two years, and this year from March 26th to June 5th. After a six-month delay due to the pandemic lockdowns, we opened our second biennial, entitled What Water Knows the Land Remembers featuring the works of 72 local, national, and international exhibition and program artists. As the biennial is situated along the Ontario Great Lakes system, we foreground the water and the land formed by it to attune ourselves to its archives and ecologies. While our physical context is the city of Takaranto, TBA also draws on decolonizing metaphors of sedimented histories in land and water at least 3.9 billion years old coast to coast. In 2019, our Indigenous advisor, Ange Loff, noted, Takaranto is the site of many rivers that have been built over. These hidden layers tell the story of shifting populations and correspond to several historical layers of Indigenous history going back to 1000 CE. While the Biennial's inaugural year in 2019 brought, cl brought close to 300,000 visitors, locally and internationally, this year we were visited by just over 150,000 in-person attendees and 25,000 virtual audience members. This 2022 visitor count is explained, of course, by the pandemic context. So what does this mean? Opening our exhibitions just as the world was re-emerging has taught me a number of invaluable post-pandemic lessons in community and arts-based programming, and the power and hope that arts and culture bring to learners of all ages. And these are, number one, free and accessible contemporary art. The research is clear. Learning about and participating in the arts helps students develop a range of competencies and skills, not just in creativity, but in citizenship, social-emotional learning, and in health. With waning fundings for schools, for arts in our schools, our mobile arts curriculum, we call it the MAC tools, they were co-created with our 2022 artists, centering perspectives of black, indigenous, and persons of color. The concept of a tool is understood as an implement used for building, or conversely taking down and rebuilding. In the same way we wanted our intergenerational learners, both in and outside the classroom, to access these tools free of financial barriers and use them to learn and unlearn, examine and create new ideas. Our storytellers, more on this later, also actively use these tools in their school visits and public programs, resulting in neighborhood walks, nature observations, painting, sketching, doodling, listening and performance. Number two, emphasize inclusivity. This of course is not new due to pandemic times, but still so important. Since inception in 2016, inclusivity has driven TBA's thinking. We want our collaborators and audiences alike to feel represented and cultivate a kinship, whether from the city of Toronto or not. No matter how you identify TBA's context, of repatriating Takaranto's living history encourages that your diversity is represented through your relationship to the land that we live, work, and play on. Therefore, land-based learning and personal placemaking concepts were threaded throughout our exhibitions and programs. Dr. Cyrus Marcus Ware, in his work, MBL Freedom, drew on the idea of abolitionist futures, where we create an immersive, experience rooted in social justice, care, and future planning. And while we encouraged in-person visits, we ensured access and inclusivity by live streaming and recording many of our events and talks, and by creating video tours for virtual classrooms and visual description tours for those with low vision. We wanted even the remotest audiences to have access to these representations in deep discussions and reimaginings of a post-pandemic future. Number three, don't take yourself too seriously. But please do come to our exhibitions and learning spaces with an open, curious mind. 
We invited everyone to come and make these spaces their own without judgment, without prejudice. You didn't need to know anything about contemporary art. Ghazale of Arzamani's Forest to Float was an outdoor site-specific installation comprised of a large cement poured circle filled with 7,200 square feet of spongy blue rubber mulch, the kind used in children's playgrounds. <clears throat> Aptly, this installation was extremely popular with school groups and young families. It encouraged participants to not only take off their masks, but play, explore, and be curious. It was the number one artwork for repeat visitors throughout the biennial. They turned over the rubber pieces in their hands, bounced around, chased each other, and even sat down to find a quiet place to sit and eat lunch, reflect, or chat. This really showed us that the spaces we created to encounter contemporary art were just as much about rest, placefulness, and healing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number four, stories sustain us. The pandemic gave us time to turn inwards and perhaps face a lot of ugly truths about ourselves. Contemplating, protesting, healing the state of the world, all while isolated from our communities, we knew that re-emerging two years later meant that a biennial of contemporary art needed to spark conversation, inspire and seek solutions. Our storyteller program was our way of interpreting the traditional docent tour. What better way to connect, what better way to reconnect than through our stories? Our storytellers mediate the context of each artwork and artist, but also align their tours with personal stories, difficult conversations, and connections that embodied the artworks. Each of our five stellar storytellers were encouraged to bring their lived experiences to each art encounter. What resulted were very intimate and warm gatherings, albeit masked sometimes, where storytellers delivered to over 3,500 attendees over the 72 days of free public art. Finally, number five, remain open and nimble. I mentioned coming to the Biennial as an audience member with an open mind, but this is a lesson for me as well as a cultural programmer. In some ways, the pandemic close, brought us closer together than ever through distance. Rallying together over the radical shifts in our collective consciousness created a new kind of honesty with ourselves and with each other. We moved to quicker calls of action, urgent protests, movements, awakenings, without a moment left to spare. Is it through great periods of upheaval that creativity emerges? Perhaps. With the ground shifting beneath us, our openness keeps us nimble, nimble to relational action. These radical navigations of how to pull together through uncertain times has magnified our focus on preserving our stories strengthening our relations and sustaining these lessons as we move towards the next iteration of the biennial. Hope to see you there in 2024. Thank you. <laughs>